Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and and ask Junlei to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for bath supplies. Oh, that nice older lady in the rest and go, Miss Gladys? She seemed to know lots of things. Maybe she knows where to find fancy soap. I mean, only if you're not busy. Or when you're heading through Groundbreaker for something else. You don't gotta change plans on account of me. Anyhow, next time we dock in Groundbreaker, let me know. Cause I wanna come with. Nice thing about traveling with the captain. We meet all sorts of new people. Sure. Best part is when they pay us. We never really had new folks in Edgewater, except the captain. Kinda hard to make new friends when everyone's already decided they don't like you. Could be a favor in disguise. A lot of people out here ain't that nice. Nikos mock apple cider. A hard cider for a hard cider. If you're here for this week's magazine club meeting, you're a touch late. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship? Oh, gosh. We never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and synthamon. I guess you could eeny miny mow it. Take your time, dear. A lady's sense has a lot about her. Like grit and grime covered over with cleaner, you mean? Well, that's a smell that means we're really going places. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. Anytime, sweetheart. You know where to find me. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish from Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. Now, there's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's gonna be worth it.
Don't mess with us. Aren't those cakes just about the cutest little things you ever seen? Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Most people don't. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? Or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. And I was a fool for staying. Sanjar, of course. He had all these glorious ideas about how he'd run Monarch. Rest periods between every work shift. No shift more than ten hours long. You company folk are all the same. Choose to stay, then complain about the choice you've made. How was I supposed to know it'd turn out like this? It all sounds wonderful, until you realize there's only a few centimeters of repurposed steel between you and the deadliest creatures in the galaxy. I could do with a few kilometers of cold vacuum, but that spaceship has flown. Only every day. But in case you haven't noticed, we don't exactly get ships on a regular basis, yours notwithstanding. And even if I did scrape together enough to buy passage out with sublight, which would mean reaching Fallbrook without getting eaten, shot, or dissolved into green goop, what then? Well, thank you for reminding me. As if I weren't already destined for an early grave. That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back before the board tucked tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst. And the mushrooms, well, not many venture out of town, what with the monsters hereabouts. I can whip one up for you, but it'll cost. Here's a menu. Oh, yikes. I can't cover this much, Captain. You got it. I got all the ingredients. Should only take about an hour in the oven. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. My belly's gurgling just to smell it, Mr. Raymond. Thank you so much. A pleasure to help such a charming young lady. Oh, gosh. My tongue's rumbling just smelling that casserole. The dust bat casserole Mr. Raymond made smells incredible. Oh, I kind of want to take a little taste. But I'm gonna be strong. Now look how cute these cakes from Cascadia are. Someone even traced little hearts in them. Ah, oh, I guess that settles dinner. Thanks for hauling me all over creation, Captain. Well, I was gonna, but then it hit me. I got this nice meal all planned out with music, and I got that soap to scrub up with, but... I don't got nothing nice to wear, Captain. I don't have a head for fashion, and I can't really picture myself in something clean and... pretty. There's this place I heard of in Byzantium, Jolliker's Haberdashery. I bet I could find something nigh-on perfect at a place like that. Thanks, Captain. I know I've been asking a lot. But you help me out every time. You're the best. I love Byzantium. You, with the hips, over here. Let me take a closer look at you. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. Don't speak. 
Hold that posture for a moment while I admire you. You have a natural contraposto, my dear. The way you rest your weight against your hip suggests a certain rugged charisma possessed only by the mighty primal and the well-traveled spacer. Splendid. I love it. Ah, oh, Celeste, you've done it again. I knew from the moment I laid eyes on you that I'd found my muse. I'm Celeste Jolicoeur, and you, my dear, are exactly what Byzantium needs. I'm an artist, darling, not a tweed merchant. I don't sell things. I pollinate the world with art. I'm working on a new line of clothing that will shock this city to its core, and I'd like your help. What do you say, my dear? Care to make history with me? Everything I need to know can be deduced from a first impression. You're an outsider. You're exotic. You carry a whiff of barbarism and adventure. You're the embodiment of everything I want in my new line. When I look at you, I see the very embodiment of everything the walls of Byzantium were built to keep out. Making an outfit worthy of you won't be easy. I'll need your help gathering the right materials. Marvelous! You and I are gonna wake this city up like a cold splash of wine to the face! What I need is a survey of the outside world. What does the common laborer wear? How do the wild-eyed madmen of Monarch dress themselves? I've heard rumors, but I require samples. Also, I expect you to model for me. Oh, you cad! You'll be the talk of Byzantium once I'm done with you. I'll need you to model for me the following. The apparel of an iconoclast, the armor of a marauder, and a full ensemble of spacer gear. Helmet included. And when I say spacer gear, I mean an outfit worn by real spacers. None of that garbage spacers choice pedals. You have the bearing and demeanor of a born model. You're going to absolutely murder this job. I expect you'll cut an exquisite figure. What else do you need to know? I've heard rumors of these iconoclasts, half-mad zealots rampaging across the surface of Monarch. You'll have to find your own way into Monarch. I can't help you. Even if I could, I prefer not to interfere with your creative process. <laughs> I don't know, I've never seen a Marauder. Not in person, anyway. There are always Aetherwade programs, but I want something authentic. Byzantium is long overdue for a change of wardrobe, my dear. Something barbaric, yet elegant. If I were an enterprising spacer in need of a wardrobe, I'd probably head to the Groundbreaker. Goodness, look at those atrocious contours. The sheer brutality of its design offends the senses and shocks the mind into a state of palpable excitement. I adore it! Two outfits remain. I can't wait to see what you'll bring me. Something shocking, I hope. You don't gotta be so forward about my reasons, Captain. Let me get a good look at you. Turn around, please, darling. My word. Such muscular shoulders. You're a vision, dear. Uh, I am no such thing, ma'am. Nonsense. You're absolutely lovely. Chin up now. I have just the thing for you. Let me do a back of the envelope calculation. Materials, labor, licensing and copyright. There. Love? That's the ultimate luxury, darling. 
love. <laughs> oh, gracious me. I don't get why that's funny, ma'am. Oh, my cherub. Who woos for love anymore? That's so... precious. All right, Captain. Here is the absolute best I can do for you. Darling, do I look like an amateur? I read her measurements by eye. And don't you ask, because they're no one's business but her own. There are some things I simply cannot skimp on, darling. Such a lovely young lady deserves the best. Now stand back. Back, back! I'll enter the settings and get these machines spinning. You'll be broke to bespoke in nearly an hour. And there we are, my darling girl. I wish you a splendiferous evening. And if you don't mind my asking, have you any interest in modeling? What? Oh, no, ma'am. All them eyes staring at me? I couldn't. No way, no how. I get scared just thinking on it. I wish you weren't so shy, my Violet. You truly are beautiful. I hope your date sees that as clearly as I. Oh, can you believe this outfit? It's so handsome, I'm almost afraid to touch it. Well, I guess that's everything then. After all this time, I can... I just have to actually do it now. Y you know, there's, there's a part Jun Lei's been looking for to fix up the air cyclers. They only carried them on big colony ships, like the Hope. I know. For a while, it, it felt like everything I did was a little bit of help. And it meant I didn't have to ask her to be mine. Not yet. Not for real. Next time we dock with Groundbreaker, I'm doing it. I'll send June a message and ask her over. Oh, this is real scary, Captain. I'm grateful for all you've done. Felix, your abs is surely not gonna believe this. Guess who the villain was in this week's Virginia Yang Girl Detective? Mr. Bertie Holcomb, that toss baller! That's the episode with Ruth Bellamy, right? Been meaning to catch that. All right. She's on her way. How do I look? Oh, my hands have finally stopped shaking. All right, all right. Deep breath. Here I go. So I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He's probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I get indignant about something. Then he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but he'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. Okay, Captain, she's gone. I'm near about vibrating, I'm so excited. So she got here, and after a few minutes she said, hey, do you have some new parts? And I was like, nah, I used a new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle-like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live... Monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about 
The things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor and how it made her want to be more open. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! We talked about it some. I told her I wasn't sure how it would work, how I've had a bad time of it in the past. She said we'll take it as it comes. Fix things together. Share meals, talk. Maybe she could rub my shoulders when they're sore. I said I might like that. It's all on your account, you know? Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met June Lay at all. I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour.